It's become part of the city's culture, identity, history. But this sport goes beyond the fortress. The Scarlet and Gray. The UNLV men's hockey team has dominated. Our boys in silver. It's a great opportunity. It's a great challenge. It's the right time. It just, it feels right. The Monsters in the North. The Golden Knights are beefing up their minor leagues with the Night Monsters. They begin playing this upcoming season. And the next generation. When we scored the overtime goal, it's like, really, that just happened? The Vegas Junior Golden Knights girls made history by becoming the first female hockey team to represent the state. They live at the rink. They love the game. Vegas wanted hockey. Vegas got hockey. Covering every local team on the ice, this is Hockey in the Desert Weekly. Welcome inside Hockey in the Desert Weekly. I'm your host, Vince Sapienza. It was a tough week for Vegas hockey between the gold, silver, and scarlet and gray in seven games played combined. Just one win to speak of. But before we show you what went wrong and the good, let's fire home a snapshot of what else is in store over the next 30 minutes. We've got highlights. We've got beer. We'll show you how the Golden Knights broadcasters are turning a good time into a good cause. Later, I go one-on-one -on -one with head coach Ryan Craig, who enters year two as bench boss in Henderson. Once again, we've got the Skating Rebels in studio. Assistant Captain Kyle Quinn will join us to talk about their weekend in Arizona, and we are setting the table for the Night Monsters inaugural home series in Tahoe later this week. Well, we begin with the guys in gold. It was a rough season opener for those guys in gold starting in the nation's capital and a familiar face in Logan Thompson tied at one in the second Vegas gave up three goals on three consecutive shots in a span of three minutes, seven seconds. That would prove to be the difference in this one, adding insult to injury. Victor Olofsson, who was having a great start to his season, goes into the boards awkwardly, needed help getting to the bench and down the tunnel, did not return on the trip. Thompson, who was traded this past center, summer, earned a win in his Caps debut, making 24 saves against his former club. Logan, who dealt with a death in the family that prior week, tells me he earned the game puck from the team. Kind of a long week for, for the family, so I think um, yeah, this game had a lot of meaning in, in a lot of different ways. So um, I appreciate the guys uh, you know, coming out and, and, and working hard. You know, obviously getting two points is the most important thing. And, um, you know, getting the first win under the belt is always, I think, the hardest. And I think it's a, that's a great team to, to build off for our team. You know, that's an elite offense and elite defense. So I think uh, the guys came out and, and played an amazing game. And I think it's a step in the right direction. Now, a couple days later in Tampa, it was a dream start for the Knights. Braden McNabb turning back the clock to his junior days. Goes in his bag and pulls out the old curl and drag for his first of the season. Getting everybody on the bench fired up, but similar to what Vegas did to the Lightning in year one. Tampa flipped the script late, scoring a pair of goals in an 87-second span. In the final three minutes of the game, first it was Brandon Hagel from the top of the circle, and then Nikita Kucherov gets his second of the game off a lucky bounce right here off Nick Haig and in. That's the difference as Vegas fall 4-3. to three. Oh, We just let our guard down. Um... I have 222 left. We give them in the middle of the ice and make a good play. So be it. But uh, two two minutes left. You gotta find ways to bear down. Can't let uh, let them score again. Uh, you gotta regroup and start taking the uh, uh, momentum towards them and at least get that one to overtime. That's just uh, nah. It's not good. And over in Sunrise, home of the reigning Stanley Cup champs, Tanner Pearson opens up his scoring account as a Golden Knight, netting a goal and an assist. But the story. Like in Tampa, Vegas could not hold a lead in this one. Eventually, this one would go to overtime, and it's the Cardiac Cats earning both points, leaving the VGK with one out of a possible six on the trip. Early in the year on a road trip, you obviously want to uh, bank in some of these points. Um, you know, to only get one, um, I mean, it's, it's frustrating for sure. Uh, uh, but <clears throat> we're heading back home. We're going we're gonna to learn from it. Um, and uh, keep building and, and just, uh, you know, like I said, learn from it and be better. Beer and hockey, they go together like a Zamboni and ice. But what does drinking dogs and a broadcast duo for the Golden Knights have in common? How about a good time and a good cause? Welcome to Big Dogs, the oldest brewery in Las Vegas and home to the newest beverage, Quenching the Thirst, 
for all medieval maniacs. What the Puck, it's a collaboration with Dave and Shane. They're the TV commentators for the Golden Knights. Fun label, fun beer, nice easy drinking, light, light juicy, good. <laughs> 2023 marked the 30th anniversary of Big Dogs, and to help celebrate, the Golden Knights broadcast team of Dave Gosher and Shane Knighty emceed the event. And it's there where an idea first started to brew. Shane and I are about as involved as two guys can be that have never brewed beer, but we certainly know how to drink beer. Shortly after the Golden Knights season came to an end in Dallas, Gosher and Knighty put their headsets down, stopped talking, and went to work. We were back there stirring uh, everything and picking the hops. They, they let us have an opinion. They picked their own, but they, they kind of, it was more of a guided opinion, which good. We had the experts lead the way, but uh, and it's turned out phenomenal. The, the, the look of the can, taste of the beer, I uh, cannot be more pleased. It's a hazy IPA, so it's light, about 5%, drinkable, and we wanted something that was drinkable. You know, we had, we had talked about all sorts of different concepts, but, you know, I, I like that you could have you know, more than one of these and be pretty comfortable. So a little citrusy. We were in here a month ago sniffing hops, tasting other beers. So we said we put in a pretty good amount of work to, to try to get it to be something that we would like and be proud of. Aside from the taste, what differentiates this set of suds is the can itself. A caricature of us calling games in the broadcast booth. My dog is me, Dave's dog is him. Me looking grumpy, Dave annoying me, so we had a little fun with it. They're kind of like this in real life. If you ever watch a Knights game, you see him in the booth. He's a little more serious. He's a little more silly and fun. So, you know, they really portray that amazingly on this label. And, uh, you know, um, important thing other than the label is the beer is good inside and it is delicious. But the label really takes it home too. you know, good, good homage to, to good times. What the Puck is not just for the IPA enthusiasts, but the community as a whole. Staff say a large portion of the net proceeds will go to Three Square Food Bank here in Las Vegas. So that's something we always try to do. We always try to give back to the community. They always take care of us. So we want to make sure that we give back uh, when we can. And uh, the beer is the best way to do that, of course. We wanted this to help somebody uh, if we could. Shane and I didn't really know what we were doing coming into this process. Fortunately, the people at Big Dogs did and do. So, uh, you know, credit to them. I mean, this is basically their hard work with some input from us, but uh, it's really a lot, so much of this is them. We, we couldn't be more thankful to, to them to be able to, to help us do this. Now, Big Dogs tells us if you want to get your What the Puck, you can find it at their brewery for a limited time as well as T-Mobile Arena. Now, despite all the ice, we are just getting warmed up here on Hockey in the Desert Weekly. When we return, we head to House Henderson. See how they fared in their home opening weekend against Calgary. Plus, I go one-on-one -on -one with head coach Ryan Craig. Give it here. As in gold, it's another three-game homestand, starting with the Ottawa Senators coming to town on Friday to help celebrate Nevada Day. The Sharks return to the Fortress Saturday night, and then Vegas will close it out, looking to cool off the flames on Monday. You're watching Hockey in the Desert Weekly. Hey, Ron, you there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want to see it. Guys, we have over 5,000 people coming tomorrow night. Let's get moving here, get this place cleaned up. Let's go. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh God. Coach, can we play hockey now? Not until your chores are done. That's a great commercial. That's great. <laughs> I love that one. Shot that. Director Brian McCormick can take the credit for that. Who says hockey players don't have fun, eh? I'm told that is just one of many commercials set to come out from America First Center this season featuring the Silver Knights. Now, while it remains to be seen if Ryan Craig will continue to be the star of the show, he is no doubt the leader of that locker room heading into year two as head coach in Henderson. For myself coming back with our staff being the same, uh, we've had some continuity there. We can roll into that and look to expand roles. After spending six seasons on the Golden Knights bench as an assistant, 
Ryan Craig ended his tenure in Vegas with a Stanley Cup. That offseason, he made the short drive to Henderson for a new challenge and his first head coaching job. Something that you have to sit in that chair. Uh, until you sit in the head coach uh, chair, you don't know the decisions that come across your desk. Uh, obviously, at the levels you move up with, uh, more of that comes with it. But uh, to manage the players, manage guys going up and down, uh, making sure you're communicating with everybody and everybody's on the same page, I think that's something that was maybe new to me. I'd never done that before. Uh, but look forward to continuing to grow. In his first season as the HSK bench boss, Ryan Craig's group finished with 28 wins in 72 games. Good for eighth in the Pacific Division, 15 points out of a would-be playoff spot. The Pacific Division's a whole different division than the rest of the American Hockey League with the travel and, and the teams. I love that we play our rivals uh, and the Vegas Golden Knights rivals all the time, so it builds that rivalries up, uh, makes for some exciting hockey. Now, while he doesn't know how year two will end, he says he does like the current makeup of the roster. I think we're firmer, uh, faster, you know, hopefully we have some more finish. Those are kind of the buzzwords uh, that we've built into our group here that we want to make sure uh, we're talking about each and every night. Now those can be uh, all different types of situations, but I feel if we play to our identity that way, it uh, gives us the best chance to win. Now, while there's still plenty of optimism for the season ahead in Henderson, the Silver Knights are off to a slow start to the year. After splitting their season opening series in Texas, HSK came up empty in their home opening series with Calgary, losing 5-3 Friday, shut out 4-0 on Saturday. Well, yeah, now we got a, a challenge uh, coming up, so we've got to start the game the way we started today, and then uh, the, the next step is to put together 60 minutes uh, we haven't really done that this year so far, and, and, and that's, that's a big part of the game, so we gotta, we got to be ready to do that. We now turn our attention to the team up in Tahoe. As of this month, we can proudly say Fox 5 and the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network are the official broadcast partner for the Night Monsters. ECHL affiliate to the Golden Knights. And this week they will open up their inaugural season at the Tahoe Blue Events Center against the Jacksonville Icemen in a two game series starting on Thursday. All month long we've been talking with head coach Alex Lowe about the ins and outs of starting a new franchise in a new market. And while there are a lot of different variables at play when it comes to the product on the ice, it will have a very familiar look to the medieval maniacs. We're going to play very similar to the way that guys do in Vegas and Henderson. Um, I think it makes the most sense for those guys that are on American League or NHL contracts that are down with us. But it sets them up for success when they go up. And that's that's our part of our jobs here is to make sure that those guys are ready to go when their number is called in Henderson. So I was fortunate enough to sit in coaches meetings and had in uh, at City National with, with Bruce and his staff. Um, I was right in the mix there during a rookie tournament in the locker room with Ryan Craig and his staff. Like, mm -hmm. they've done a great job. They're so welcoming. It's such a great group of people in Vegas that they've made me feel a part of that. But I think it also helps the players, too, to see me in those situations and recognize that Tahoe is not separate from Vegas and Henderson and what they're doing. It's just another step in the ladder. And if it's best for their career and their development to be in Tahoe, then they're here and they're in a good spot. Um, Will Nichols, director of player development, is going to be here a lot. I think some places they sometimes feel like, at this level at least, that they're kind of forgotten about. And Vegas mm -hmm. is the complete opposite. Like from staff all the way down to the players, like they all recognize how important the ECHL can be, and they do a great job of supporting us and making sure that they are aware of what's happening at, down here with us. Game one for the Night Monsters, Thursday, October 24th. And guess what? Hockey in the desert will be there. I will have boots on the ground bringing you a variety of stories, features both on and off the ice. But if you can't be there like me, you can watch the game on the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network on Air 5.2, Cable 125, now streaming on YouTube TV and Fubo. And a massive congratulations in order for the 12U AA Las Vegas Storm, who this past week beat the 12U AAA Vegas Junior Golden Knights in a best of three series, two games to none. Their prize, a chance to compete in the most prestigious Pee Wee Quebec tournament there is this coming February. The tourney is in its 65th year and widely regarded as one of the biggest youth hockey events in the world. Still ahead on Hockey in the Desert Weekly, it is time to turn our attention to the Scarlet and Gray Assistant Captain Kyle Quinn. Joining us in studio, we'll chat with a super senior about the recent road split at ASU and his expectations 
for the season ahead. Welcome back inside Hockey and Desert Weekly. We've talked gold, silver, a little Tahoe teal, but now it's time to talk the scarlet and gray. And to do that, we had to bring the Skane Rebels in studio as we do each and every week. And joining us this week is assistant captain, super senior defenseman, Kyle Quinn. Kyle, how are we? Good, how are you? I'm great. Let's talk about the start to this season. You are coming off the best finish in program history, getting to that championship game in the tournament a year ago, a few months later. There's still stuff on the table that you guys want to achieve. What is the mood right now as, as we get into the early part of this season? Um, coming in this year, we had a lot of new guys coming in. We have like about 10 freshmen, a couple transfers. So different moving guys on and bringing new guys in obviously makes room for changes. But mm -hmm. like we know like what we're capable of and the team we have. So the mood right now is honestly same thing as last year. We want to win a national championship, obviously. But we just take it game by game and um, we know what we're capable of. So we have the team to do it. So at the start of the year, you take on a Division One opponent in Lindenwood. You, you fare pretty well, but you go 0-2. Then you come back home, take on Oregon, and then you just pound the Ducks. 16-0 mm -hmm. in, in that second mm -hmm. game. Go back on the road now, split with ASU. Talk about what happened this past weekend. What did you learn from game one in that loss and bouncing back in, in game two with the victory? I mean, yeah, just like I said before, like we know exactly what we're capable of. We come in Friday night. Um, I wouldn't say we were complacent, but we knew that we were a skilled team and that we could definitely beat them, as mm -hmm. it showed on Saturday night. Um, but coming into Friday, yeah, I think we just need to be a little more prepared and come in and play a full 60 minutes and not play down to teams' levels because we are mostly the best team coming in the rink every night. So. And so when you look at your team, obviously a lot of fresh faces, as you said, t 10 new guys and young mm -hmm. faces, right? Yeah. As one of the leaders on this team, you know, how – I know you don't want to lose, but <laughs> a game like Friday probably helps, right? Kind of reinforce some of the things you're talking about. It does, and that's kind of what I noticed. I think uh, after we took a loss on Friday night and I saw the difference in when we came in the locker room on Saturday of how we're like, all right, we, we know we're good and we know what we're capable of, but we're here to play hockey and we're ready to go. It's a different story on Saturday night after taking that loss on Friday. Talking about being uh, part of that leadership group, what did that mean to you? Getting the A this year, uh, Del Monte getting the C, and the leadership group that you guys have, what does that mean to you and the group? I mean, it means the world to me. There's no place I'd rather be than on Friday night battling for these guys, and I would do anything for them on and off the ice. So, and having Del Monte next to me as our captain, he's no other guy better for the job as well. So it means everything to me, to be honest. It's honestly a little surreal to be here and be in, <laughs> be in Vegas and also be able to lead this team to where we're going to go. Now, I feel like I've buried the lead a little bit. Camera three. Look at that flow. Look at that, that <laughs> head of lettuce. You, best lettuce on, on the team or what? I don't know about that. I honestly need a haircut here pretty soon. It's getting long. Do you leave it for the season or uh, do you it just depends. let it I just let, let it go. go. I just, it depends. Whenever I feel like getting a cut. <laughs> I used to let it go for a while, but now it's time for a haircut, I think. <laughs> Talk to us about, about Kyle Quinn, the player on the ice, player off the ice. If, if you're thinking about coming to a game, what are they going to get? out of you when they see you on the ice and if they bump into you walking out of CNA or something like that, what are they going to get? I mean, I like to say outside the rink, I'm a pretty outgoing, fun guy. Like, I like to laugh, like to have fun, smile a lot. Um, and on the ice, maybe a little bit of a different story. I tend to dial it, dial it in when I get to the rink, so mm -hmm. I'll always be prepared, ready to go when I get to the rink. As I mentioned earlier, you're super senior, so are, are you enjoying kind of soaking things up a little bit more this time around? I mean, I know the games, you're probably always, you know, not taking those for granted, but practices I would imagine you know those numbers are dwindling as, as you move on can you enjoy practice yeah <laughs> at this level? no 100 percent. it's like definitely a little bit different now realizing that this is my last year here and um, I like loved every year here and I couldn't want I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but it is like it's slowly the biological clock is ticking now so <laughs> as we look ahead now to the weekend talk about the challenge that that lays ahead for you guys and the excitement to kind of keep building stacking those wins yeah we have a quick turnaround here we just got back the other night from asu and now we leave on wednesday straight ahead back to u of a mm -hmm. so we uh quick turnaround like i said and we get to practice this week and then go to u of a practice there and just get ready for the game same thing as last weekend road trips been a good time i love road trips i love being on the road to be honest i do i love going on the bus with the boys and just hanging out being at the hotel everything 
Are you a jokester or are you, you keep to yourself? Um, I'd probably, I would say I'm up there with the jokesters. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Quinn, super senior assistant captain defenseman for the Skating Rebels. Join us here on Hockey in the Desert. Kyle, appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. We'll chat down the road. Thank you very much. All right. We are just taking one more break here on Hockey in the Desert. When we return, we are going to be clearing the ice, so you don't want to miss that. And as we go to break, here's a look at the Fortress T-Mobile Arena. A place that is going to be rocking the next three games for the VGK. Keep it here. Welcome back inside Hockey in the Desert Weekly. As we wrap up our time, it is that time to clear the ice. And let the record show, there was a lot of great plays made over the week. The NHL, the AHL level, even the Skating Rebels put up a ton on the board. But... Anytime there's one play in particular, it is always going to be our clear the ice. And for that, it is all aboard the Gus bus. Philip Gustafson making Minnesota Wild history in St. Louis, scoring the first goalie goal in franchise history and just the 15th all time in the NHL. Now look at flurry smile with those pearly whites. Now prior to the play, there was a timeout and it was the former Knights netminder, Mark Andre Flurry, telling Gustafson, Look, if you get the puck, you just got to go for it. And as someone who's had many conversations with the flower, he said he's always wanted to score a goal at the NHL level, has never done it. He's still buying his time to do so. He tells Gus to ride the bus and look at that baby fly. Man, the Hall of Famer flurry calling it like he sees it. And that is one that will live in folklore and legend forever in the state of hockey. But you know what? We got bonus clear the ice. Why? Because the Sapienza has lit the lamp. Jackson Sapienza, number 10 in your programs, number one in your heart. Man, just a missile with the game winner. Look at the celly and then look at the walk back to the locker room. I'm a wink at you, dad. Just feeling it, getting the game puck to boot. That a baby, Jax. This has been Hockey in the Desert Weekly. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week.